Hey guys, it's Brie, and today I'm going to be talking about forensic anthropology, which if you did not know, my bachelor's degree is in anthropology, specializing in forensic anthropology. I went to University of Montana, go Grizz, and I loved it. I graduated in two years because of AP credits. If you're looking for a school that allows you to transfer a bunch of AP credits, they're pretty good about it, or at least they were when I went. Uh, I really liked the faculty and dorms weren't too bad, especially if you uh, can live in I want to say it's Dunaway Hall. They converted it all to single rooms when I was there, which is awesome. Uh, yeah, but so these are some of the books. I'm going to talk about seven books today that either got me into forensic anthropology or some one of them got me into my master's degree, actually, which was international security, and some that I just read when I was there in my different classes. So let's start with the very first book. This is Death's Acre by Dr. Bill Bass and John Jefferson. This is one of the foundational people in forensic anthropology was Dr. Bill Bass. He founded The Body Farm, which if you don't know is basically a research facility, kind of. It's a farm where they take bodies to see how different factors can affect decomposition, animal activity, things like that. If you're into the topic, it's really fascinating, but this just goes through his life, basically, as a forensic anthropologist. Oh, wow. I actually have my notes from high school. I read this when I was 13, so <laughs> I have notes in here because I used to carry this around. It looks like my junior year of high school. I had to do a presentation on this book. Um, mm -hmm. So basically this talks about the body farm and how it came to be and his career and talks about different cases. There are photos in it uh, of different setting up the body farm, Dr. Bill Bass and his wives, uh, his family, bones, things like that. This one is really great just to kind of, if you're looking for something that's engaging to read, I really enjoyed it. I understood it at 13 so if you're not in college or haven't studied this a lot, that's not going to be a hindrance with this book. It's very engaging. I enjoyed it. And yeah, good first book. Uh, thank you to my mom for when I asked to go to Barnes & Noble at 13, not cringing too hard when I asked the bookseller where Death Saker was. Uh, the same trip, actually, I got Teasing Secrets from the Dead, My Investigations as America's Most Infamous Crime Scenes by Emily Craig who is also a forensic anthropologist. This just goes through her different cases in different places. Uh, pretty famous. I haven't finished this one, actually. I read most of it, and then I don't know what happened. I was 13. I put it down. But another good one, pretty engaging. The foreword is written by Kathy... I have never learned how to say this correctly. Reichs? Reaches? Reaches? If you know the show Bones, it's her. It's based off her, and she writes fiction on Forensic Anthropology 2, which I want to say book one is Death Du Jour? Maybe? It's the Temperance Brennan books, which is our character in Bones. They're pretty entertaining. I believe the first one takes place in Canada, I think. V8. So, those are the two books that kind of got me into Forensic Anthropology as a middle schooler who was interested in science and crime and the whole legal system. Those are the ones that really got me into it. Uh, I later picked up Dead Men Do Tell Tales uh, by William R. Maples and Michael Browning. It's the strange and fascinating cases of a forensic anthropologist. So more case studies, how they went through different cases. Uh, pictures, skulls, sorry. <laughs> and just uh, the different techniques and how to get into it. There is one that talked about his students. I want to say it was Dr. Bill Bass talks about his forensic students. And these are all just kind of, you don't have to be super into all the technical terms to get into those three books. So if you're new, if you're thinking about a career change, if you're a high school student looking to start college, maybe try these three out to see if you're into the topics or not. I personally really liked them. Now the next four I read while I was at University of Montana, they were, some were more interesting than others. Uh, I'll start with the two that I used to read down in the laundry room when I was doing laundry and people didn't really want to talk to you if you were reading these. 
So these two I think I read in my Mortuary Archaeology class, which is, uh, well this book explains it the best. Forensic Recovery of Human Remains Anthropological Approaches. So this goes through a bunch of different aspects of it. Um, what, how do you collect the evidence? How do you go about excavating a grave so that you can one document uh, each level of the grave because obviously there's going to be different things. It's not just dirt. You might have a bullet casing, you might have plant material or other clues that were left behind and you want to make sure you get all of that as you're going. You don't just dig up the graves when you're doing a forensic recovery. So this is really great. It explains the different tools, the different things you're going to be looking for, things like that. So I used this in that class. Uh, we actually ended up that final for the class was really cool. It's uh, they buried bone clones the year before and then kind of went out into this wooded area in town and you had to find it, one, find where they were buried, to excavate it with your group, which was super cool. Uh, every time that memory, the photo comes up on my Facebook timeline, it makes me laugh. That was a fun class. Uh, to go with that, we have the forensic training, forensic anthropology training manual. I have the third edition. Carrie Ramey Burns is who that one's by. You're gonna have different images, how to identify different things. Uh, talks about how to do your report writing, which is very detailed. Um, right, we had a notebook, it was yellow. I think it's right in the rain or something. It's waterproof pages, which is always a good idea if you're going into this field, because where I am currently, it doesn't rain much, but a lot of places it does, and you don't want your notes completely ruined if you're out in the field. That would be bad. Uh, how to draw maps to scale and things like that, because you'll have to draw your scene maps. Uh, it talks about ethics and professionalism, how to speak in a courtroom, which they didn't discuss too much in my classes. Um, it sounds scary, for sure. That's kind of the part where you have to come across the hunting professional, but also approachable to the jury because not everyone's going to have the PhD in forensics, which these guys kind of talk about a little bit in their books on different experiences being on juries and things like that, which if you're looking at being a forensic anthropologist, you probably would have to at some point give a testimony. Yeah, it talks about different tools, dental forensics, uh, identifying bodies, different stages of development, um, identifying, identifying different bones. So I don't have an osteology textbook because I did not take the osteology class, I took the forensic mortuary archaeology class. And so this is a good one for that, just kind of going through, it's pretty much just identifying and how to age and sex a body, which you can tell certain indicators, obviously not everybody's gonna be exactly the same. Um, based off their zygomatic arches, nasal sills, and uh, brow ridges, you'll be able to tell different things like possible heritage, um, sex, and the age of the person, primarily size. So like I have a smaller skull, might be confused for a child. A lot of times you'll get softer brow ridges on males will get confused for a female skull, so it's not a perfect science. Same with uh, pelvises. Women with very narrow pelvises may be missexed as male initially. And then you have to look for other indicators, it's not just one. So that's kind of cool. It goes through that in those books. Uh, we had a bunch of forensic labs with bone clones that were fun to look at. And then the other book that we used in classes was Hard Evidence Case Studies in Forensic Anthropology. I think we did this one in one of my funds of forensic, Fundamentals of Forensic Science classes. And it just talks about how different evidence was found in specific cases. So it kind of takes the concepts and stuff from books like this and puts it into real cases and how did it really work. So these bear well together for classes. And then this one I read in a different class. It's called The Bone Woman, A Forensic Anthropologist's Search for Truth in the Mass Graves of Rwanda, Bosnia, Croatia, and Kosovo. So these, Clea, I think, Koff is the writer. She was actually a student at U of A where I got my master's degree, I believe. 
do, 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 do. I think she mentioned U of A in here, but it talks about her going out to these mass graves, excavating them, identifying the victims and things like that, which I ended up going on to study international security, partially because of this book, because I was so interested in the war crimes and the reality of things outside of the US. So this is a good one if you're looking at maybe not the traditional what you would see on TV crime perspective of forensic anthropology or if you want to look at international war crimes and genocides and things like that which is what my boyfriend studies is genocides this is a good one to see what is that like uh, it's not safe you may be threatened in this kind of scenario and there's points where she is scared and it's interesting to see that uh, she's doing it for a reason there's obviously going to be emotions related to this mass graves are it's hard to turn off those emotions when you're faced with so many people and people that have passed they may be children they may be women young old doesn't matter so this is a good one to look at if you're thinking about maybe going into that part of forensic anthropology so these are seven books that i've read throughout the years on forensic anthropology uh, i'll put a list of them down below with all the authors just in case they didn't get covered 100 percent and yeah, let me know if you have any questions or anything like that. Happy reading, guys. The sun is in my face. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. Hello. Oh boy. Yeah, you gotta be careful how you get back out. Don't knock anything over. Careful, bit. You say hi to the camera. Okay. What are you doing? You say hi? You wanna come over here? There. I'll move some books. Yeah, go. You can go that way. Hey guys, it's Bree, and that's Winnie, trying to open the blinds. Are you looking at the camera? Hmm. <coughs> this is going good. Alright, let's try it again. Hi guys, it's Bree, and today's video I'm going to be talking about forensic anthropology. Which, if you don't know, Winnie, that's not yours. Thank you for visiting. Bye, baby. <laughs> okay, so what I was saying is today, Winnie, don't touch that. I'm just gonna start over.